We now turn to matters for adoption and I call on Councillor Govindia to move Executive Report Number 1. And corporate Resources OC, I will now ask Councillor Soon to move paragraphs 15 and then Councillors Osborne and Ben Johnson to formally move and second the amendment in their names relating to that paragraph. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. If I could formally move paragraph 15, which is for adoption. Councillor Osborne. If I may, Madam Mayor, formally move the amendment. Seconded. Seconded. Thank you. Councillor Senior. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it is sometimes said that some things change and some things always say the same. And perhaps that's a very appropriate comment for tonight's discussion. Because one thing which has always stayed the same since I've been a councillor here is one's budget planning process and the fact that we are always able to hit our targets and to produce good services for local residents at a reasonable cost. The last couple of years have been particularly difficult, as we all know. At a time of, frankly, almost derisory cuts in public expenditure generally, local government has, of course, been cut extremely hard, and cut even more hard than we were expecting. But because this council planned ahead, because we were expecting things, because we did things like freezing recruitment, we have been able, nonetheless, to get on with that much reduced level of support from central government. And we've been able to do so, I hope, without too much effect on the frontline services. And we've also been able to do it, thankfully, without making too many of our staff compulsorily redundant as well. And as the budget papers show, we are, generally speaking, hitting those targets. And because we have strict financial controls, because we expect budgets to be adhered to, uh, because we do occasionally have uh, overspends which we can take advantage of, because we have a, a programme of very determined uh, capital uh, sales which themselves generate receipts, often opposed by the Labour Party, or are able to hit those financial targets. And therefore, tonight, along with another grant from the government, we are able, in a time when many of our residents are still finding life pretty tough, to freeze the, the council tax yet again. And I welcome that. But, of course, sometimes some things change, and we have here uh, have quite a rare bird. The long-promised and uh, very, very late-delivered Labour Party amendment uh, to our council tax paper. I heard all sorts of rumours about what may, be, may have been in it, uh, but in fact, in the end, frankly, there isn't a great deal in it. I also wonder, frankly, whether the members opposite have always actually read some of the budget papers, because they will see... Uh, in many respects, we are doing many of the things which they request. Uh, we have not exempted uh, top management, for example, uh, from some of the reductions. We have always sought over the years to reduce a number of hayband officers, has reduced considerably in all departments. We have amalgamated uh, two departments, for example, as well. And, of course, as members should be aware uh, from the last uh, set of committee meetings, we have taken considerable reductions as our recruitment and retention packages. So all, many of these things have already been um, addressed. What I find quite extraordinary is for all the time that I've been a councillor, uh, the Labour Party have consistently and persistently opposed the vast majority of our savings proposals. Not everyone, I, I accept, and I do accept that more recently many of these proposals have been uh, opposed in a much less vigorous form uh, by the Labour Party. But I do find it quite extraordinary, this sudden conversion almost to, f to fiscal austerity uh, from the Labour group. I don't know where this is coming from, whether it's coming from, from uh, either of the Eds or from someone else. But it really does stretch credibility uh, that the ones of Labour group, who for years have been preaching that we should spend more money and not save as much money, should suddenly come around uh, to the, co the cause which we have long held. This council has a long record of good budgeting are keeping the council tax down. As was once said, socialists can scheme their schemes, but we have work to do. The people of the borough can look forward to many more years, I hope, of proper budgeting from this council. I urge the members to adopt the paragraph and to reject the amendments. Thank you, Councillor Senior. Councillor Osborne. Well, first let me say uh, I welcome the comments from Councillor Senior. He has, in his backhanded kind of way, 
recognise that there is something a bit different about what we are saying. Uh, because it is essential that all political parties realise the circumstances in which we find ourselves are particularly dire, particularly difficult for local government, and we have to be a bit different this year on both sides of the chamber. What I'm saying to you this year, I'm trying to be as clear with you as I possibly can, is this. All sides, all observers, I want to take note of this. There is much in the majority group's proposal this year round that we accept in the main motion. Let us keep, for example, the, tax, the council tax levels exactly where they are at present. Many councils, Tory and Labour, in the country at the moment are freezing their council tax levels. Indeed, all the Labour councils in London this year plan to freeze their council tax levels and they froze them last year. So there shouldn't be a surprise in that that's what's coming from me tonight. Secondly, there are many savings, as was cack-handedly acknowledged by Councillor Se Senior, that we have already supported in committee. We recognise how dire the situation is <laughs> for local government at the moment. These are lean and difficult times. There have been some committee debates where we have opposed cuts in provision and lost. And our intention tonight is not to rake over those coals. We are avoiding that. There are more important discussions to take place tonight. And we are trying to contribute to the debate in exactly that term. What we are suggesting, what we are proposing is this, that this administration find some additional savings that allow the council to reinforce the frontline services. We want, we recognise a degree of prioritisation there, but we want greater prioritisation and we want certain key areas prioritised in the frontline services. And that's the change we want to the main motion. We do believe there are, that there are savings possible. For example, we are certain that you could save 0.5 million by merging the finance department and the admin department. We are certain that you could save 1.6 million with a greater reduction in the middle tiers of management. We are certain that you could save 1.3 million by uh, judicious cuts in the performance-related pay budget. These are new and different areas that we want the majority group to look at. And we want to do it for a reason. We want to do it because we want to prioritise three areas of frontline services. First of all, education and youth services. Eventually, there will be an upturn in the economy and we must have the skills base in this borough to use that upturn and to take advantage of it. We can find the extra half a million, half a million pounds for the relevant and supportive youth services. Second priority, public health and social care. The workforce in Wandsworth, unusual kind of a workforce. We supply more than most people. Workers who work in the City of London in the finance sector, the finance industry. More than most, workers who work in central London in the creative industries. Two key industries which are going to help pull us out of this economic recession. Wandsworth has them in a way uniquely throughout the London boroughs. It is vital that we keep those people healthy and we can find half a million for the relevant supportive voluntary sector and we can find half a million for the preventive elements of adult care, in addition to what is being proposed at the moment. Finally, community safety in Wandsworth. Absolutely vital for the residents in all sorts of ways, but especially relevant at the moment. If we are looking for spending and investment in our borough, we have to ensure that the community is safe, the environment is safe, and we ought to be spending more money on that. And we can find 0.3 million to reinstate our parks police along the lines of the recent staff side plan and still get our extra police through the so-called buy one, get one free arrangements. 
say this in conclusion. There is a certain irony in a council like this one where we don't have, perhaps mercifully, any Liberal Democrat councillors. Yes, I, fear, I thought I'd get some agreement on that. Um, I'm tempted to say there aren't any Liberal Democrats really in the government anymore either. But anyway, I'll move on from that point. Two Liberal Democrats may or may not have shown us the way forward. That's the irony. Possibly, Chris Hoon MP, depends on how the court case goes, I suppose. But it may be that he, of all people, is showing us that it might just possibly be a mistake to get somebody else to pay the price and take the penalty in the short term. There could be greater costs further down the line. And it's that that we are urging you to think about in these three key areas. And secondly, you may not agree with our three priorities. But at least we are stating them loud and clear tonight. Um, and we have a plan. We have a view on what the priorities are. I'm looking for that in the majority group's proposal, and I do not see it. It has taken the other Liberal Democrat, Vince Cable MP, to get the right phrase for us. He says, the Cabinet's own business secretary, the government lacks a compelling vision of where the country is heading beyond sorting out the fiscal mess. I fear the same might be said of the Wandsworth Conservative administration, but I would love to be proved wrong. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. Councillor Morritt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Of course, this debate, as I guess is so often the case in this chamber, is driven by the forces of circumstance bearing down on us from all sides. What we cannot escape, however, is the absence of money. And from what I've just heard from Councillor Osborne, perhaps now even the minority party accepts that. But let's call this amendment what it is. It's a gimmick. It's designed to blunt the household analogy for the public finances, which has over the last 30 or so years been successful in that its immediate logic has proved almost impossible to refute. They don't vote against uh, a freeze, and so they merely tinker. The champagne which awaits the big Keynesian spending splurge, I suspect some of their members would like to see, is not so much being put on ice as kept in the deep freeze. Let us not forget that there are few things more morally wrong than passing our debts on to the next generation. Because if we don't take the decision, difficult decisions now, that does mean cuts in some of the areas Councillor Osborne's highlighted. We won't really be able to help those who really need it further down the line. Next year, we need to save £6.7 million, pounds, and the year after, £26.9 million. Pounds. Though, as Councillor Senior has um, indicated, we're making good progress, the decisions we need to take get harder with each passing meeting, each council's uh, committee cycle, and each year. This wasn't a flabby council to start with. It is painful, and we know that the last few pounds are often the hardest to shed. But do the Labour groups seriously think that they're at the areas they're now seeking to quasi ring fence are somehow immune from inefficiency? This alternative budget is actually merely being shaped by a political free-for-all. Instead of clarity, there's confusion. The paper arrives late. I doubt the numbers that Councillor Osborne refers to are known to uh, many uh, chairman or cabinet members. Labour's alternative stance, it strikes me, is not shaped by vast quantities of council papers, reference materials, charts, facts and information gleaned from hundreds of sources and painfully pe uh, pieced together, as the paragraph before us is, it is. No, it's a measure put forward by the Labour Party which touches on an almost altruistic sense of who and what the minority party is supposed to be for. It's a disagreement between theory and practice, between efficiency and sentiment, between the left wing, the hard left, and the moderate, almost electable wing of the party opposite, between a desire to do what's fiscally right and a desire from the minority party, as it were, to look after their people. 
I recently read a piece by Stephen Shakespeare of the Pauls to You Gov, in which he wrote powerfully and far more eloquently than I could have managed, but he somehow managed to echo my own concerns about the danger of the tax and uh, spend debate shifting leftwards. Now, in political communications, one often talks about framing the debate. That is, defining the way that an issue um, is discussed by defining the context within which it is discussed. It's closely related to what behavioural psychologists call the anchoring effect. These issues form the cultural mood music that shapes instincts towards a party, and that's exactly what Labour are hoping to achieve. Let us not for a moment assume it's for the good of the residents, because we know, and their record shows, that's simply not credible. They seemingly have an ability to possess, as the historian near GP Taylor wrote of himself, strong views weekly. One of the problems with these endless calculations and positionings in modern politics is that they usually don't work. Since the crisis of 2008, the left has lost 8, 19 out of 25 elections in Europe. For the first time in a century, the right runs Britain, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain and Sweden. A social democra democracy of sorts is only being kept alive in those paragons of economic virtue, Greece and Portugal, so perhaps that's why we now have this elaborate ruse. But it won't work for them. History shows that in times of austerity, the electorate prefers to put its faith in parties and politicians that offer competence and leadership. Tonight we've seen neither. At its heart, this is an alternative budget, is a series of gimmicks which are too large and consequential to bear. Colleagues, let's vote to real tangible action and support Councillor Senior and his mer Thank you, Councillor Merritt.